Hello and welcome to an Envato Test Plus tutorial. I'm Adi Purdila, and today I'm going to show you how to get started with Tailwind CSS. And this is a uh, highly customizable CSS framework that you can use to quickly build web pages. Uh, it works by providing a list of classes you can use to control every visual aspect of your page, from margins and paddings to the way text is displayed. Now, here's a breakdown of what you'll learn in this tutorial. First, we'll take a closer look at what Tailwind is all about and how it's different from other CSS frameworks. Then, we'll install the framework using the CDN version and build a simple demo. In part three, we'll use the NPM version and explore some of the more advanced functionality. And finally, we'll learn how to customize Tailwind. Now, first things first, what is Tailwind CSS? In short, it's a CSS framework, but it's different from the CSS frameworks you might have used before uh, in the sense that it only gives you the low level styles. Uh, with Tailwind, you won't find any of those complicated components that you usually find in Bootstrap or Foundation, like uh, hero components or cards or stuff like that. Instead, uh, you get classes for text alignment, border styling, colors, sizing, and so on. And by using these classes, you can create any layout or component you want. And this is a very good approach because since everything is broken down to the fundamental pieces, you don't have to override anything. You can just pick the styles you want. Of course, you can customize these styles and I'll show you how in the final section of the tutorial, but you can achieve a lot with just the basic styling. Now, to get a better idea of how this all works, let's uh, go ahead and create a simple demo using Tailwind. Now, there are two ways you can use the framework, either with a CDN or with NPM or Yarn or some other options. Now, the CDN version is the easiest one, as you can see here from uh, the official documentation. You just copy this link and you load it in the head of your document. However, with the CDN version, you have some restrictions, like you can customize it uh, you can use any directives, and these are actually quite useful. Uh, you can enable certain features, and you can't also install third-party plugins. But if you just want to get to know the framework, then the CDN version is a very good place to start. So I have a simple demo prepared here. I have a simple index file. I'm just going to paste in this link. And to get going, I'll start with a simple container. And then inside that container, I'm going to add another div. And then inside that, I'm going to add a figure with an IMG. Now, I'm not adding any classes just yet. And then uh, here, I'm going to have another div. And this one will have a paragraph and an anchor tag and then another paragraph. Now, I'm just going to populate these with some... Uh, some text and for the image I'm just going to load this uh, illustration that I got here. You can find the link to this in the lesson notes. So let's take a quick look at how it looks like. All right, so we have this illustration and the other content in there. Now we actually have some custom styling here that's not related to Tailwind so let's go ahead and add that first and we have a stuff here, demo heading, and a paragraph here with the class of muted. All right. So, so far, this is the page that we're working with. Now, the cool thing about Tailwind is that you have all of these classes that you can use to define things like alignment, um, margin, padding, text properties, colors, right display properties even and they're also responsive you can put a prefix in front of them and you can have for example a certain text alignment on small screens and a different one on large screens and this is how it basically works 
if I want to add a margin, let's say on the x axis, you would say m for margin, x, which is on the x axis, and then the value. If you say auto, it's going to do margin auto on both left and right. And that will essentially center align this whole container. What if you want to add a padding on the top and bottom? You can do that with P for padding, Y for the axis, and then dash the value. 4 is actually a multiple. It's a multiplier. The base value is 0.25 rems. So by doing 4, you're actually doing 2 rems of padding, top and bottom. And it goes like this. And then you can specify width value, width, dash, what width do you want? You can do a number, you can do a multiple, you can do a fraction. So let's say three quarter or three by four, that's going to give me a three by four width. And you can see these values if you go to the official documentation, right? Uh, let's see where is width, for example, sizing width, All right? So you have width zero, width one, and it gives you 0.25 rems. Uh, width four, it gives you one rem. Uh, with auto, we'll let the browser calculate, and you, then you have these fractions. With uh, three by four, where is it? 3 by 4 gives you a width of 75%, which is exactly what I have here. If I want a width of 2 by 4, it's going to give me 50%. All right, so it's really, really easy to control this. Now, Tailwind has a flex box built in, so you can use the flex property to define a flex container. For example, Let's keep this at three by four. I can target this div and I can say class MD flex, meaning on medium screens, this should be flex, right? So now this whole container is a flex container. So I can, you know, resize this and you'll notice that on small screens, it turns into a regular layout. Pretty cool. What else can we do? We can set items center. This is again another utility from Tailwind that you can find under Flexbox. So let's see, flex align items. You'll find items center. Uh, next, let's see about this figure. I can add a class of MD, so on medium and above, do a flex shrink zero and also on the image i can add my own classes i can say class on medium with something like 64 which if we look back at the documentation for with with 64 is 16 rems so with those classes now our page looks like this let's add some margin left to this div here. Well, that's super easy to do. We'll say class. Let's say on medium screens and above, we'll do margin left 10. And that's going to add a margin left if we do an inspection here and we check out the computed values. You'll see that this div here has a margin left of. 40 pixels. So again, that 10 value is a multiplier. And I can go even crazier than that. I can say margin top 10. And if I want to remove that margin top on medium screens, I can say MD MT 10. So maybe that's a, a little bit confusing, but let's do a quick refresh. And actually, this should be zero. So Let's start by resizing this, okay? This is where we start. This is mobile first. So on mobile first, these classes are applied, the ones without any kind of uh, prefix in front. So I have a margin top 10, 
which is applied to this div here. But as I move on to mid, I'm applying a margin left 10 and also a margin top zero. So I'm basically removing the one that I set here. That's pretty cool. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, we can apply a whole bunch of different uh, styles for text. For example, on this anchor tag, uh, we can apply a display block. Let me make this big again. Um, what else? We can apply a margin. Let's say my two margin top bottom. So on the y axis, two, just to separate it a bit from the elements above and below. We can specify the text size using the text LG class. We can specify the font weight, font semi bold, for example. We can specify the color, let's say text, oops, text gray. 900 and that's going to change the color of the text and also we can specify how it behaves on hover so i can say hover underline cool so these are classes here if i search for hover there it is text decoration i can choose between underline line through and no underline so that's pretty much where you can get to by using the CDN version. You can do a lot more with Tailwind, but you would have to use the NPM version. So let's do that next. To install a Tailwind via NPM, you need to first open up a terminal window and navigate to your working directory. And because I'm using uh, Visual Studio Code, it automatically does that for me. And to move on, of course, you need to have node installed on your computer, you need to have npm installed. Um, there are a bunch of um, tutorials on how to do that, I'm going to assume you have these installed. So what you do is you say npm install tailwind CSS. And that's just going to go through the installation process. Now notice that in your working directory, you now have a node modules folder. This contains all the NPM packages needed for this to work. Uh, and you also have a package log.json file. This is uh, to keep track of what uh, node modules you're using or what NPM modules you're using. The next step is to create a new file. Let's call this styles.css. And inside, you need to load the framework. Now you do that by using these functions, tailwind base, tailwind components, and tailwind utilities. By doing this, you've loaded the entire framework. So now this is basic CSS, right? Um, by itself, it doesn't do anything. So if for example, I were to comment this bit, and just load style CSS, well, it's not going to do anything. In fact, my page is just going to return back to its default because it doesn't have any styling. The way to work with this is to compile this CSS file and then load the compiled result. Uh, compiling this file can be done in many different ways and they're all described here where it says process your CSS with Tailwind. Uh, there are a bunch of options you can use post CSS, Webpack, Laravel Mix, and a lot of different things that uh, personally I haven't even heard of this Webpack Encore. But the easiest way is actually with the Tailwind CLI or the command line interface. You basically type in this text in your terminal, and that will compile your CSS file into an output file. So we're going to hit enter. And now I have a, an output.css which contains all the styles that I need. So now I can go and load up my output CSS file. 
and by doing a refresh on my page, it's back online. Now, apart from loading your framework like this, there are a whole bunch of things, or cool things you can do with, uh, with Tailwind. For example, you can create your own styles by referencing some of the styles from Tailwind. For example, demo heading, which is the class that I applied to this paragraph, I can say apply, and this is again, this apply command is from Tailwind. Uppercase, maybe text small and font bold. So now we have to recompile this. Great. So now if we look in the output and we search for demo heading, you can see that it has all of these properties applied to it, like the font size, weight, text transform. And these are all taken from the classes that are already defined in Tailwind. So now our text looks like this. You can also grab color information like this muted class that we applied here. I can say apply text gray 600 for example. Then again compile refresh and I have a different color for text. Now apart from being able to create these uh, these styles, you can also customize pretty much every aspect of the Tailwind theme. And you do that by changing the configuration file. So if we go back to the documentation and we search for configuration, uh, there is a special command that we can do, npx tailwind init, that will create a tailwind config.js. And in here, we can use our own values for pretty much everything from the breakpoints the, to the font families uh, to the colors that we want to use. So I've actually prepared uh, a demo configuration file that basically adds this XXL breakpoint here. It this, uh, defines the font families and also it adds a new color called brand. Okay, so now we can compile this again. And if we look in the output and we search for XXL, you'll now see media queries based on that new breakpoint and also classes that we can then use. So now, for example, I can go into my style CSS and I can go in here and I can say text brand and that's going to use my brand color. I can use font display and that's going to use the font that I defined in my configuration. It's this one right here. And I can also go in, for example, on the body and I can say apply. font body, which will apply this font. So now I can compile again. And I have custom styles applied to my page. And that's a quick look at Tailwind CSS, definitely a very useful, um, kind of different framework than what we're used to. And I strongly encourage you to uh, check out the official documentation because Tailwind has a lot more to offer than what I covered here. Uh, with that said, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I'm Adi Pordila and until next time, take care.